The title sums up what the book's all about, Human Capitalism, uh, How Economic Growth Has Made Us Smarter and More Unequal. And it's that second part that's the real focus of the book. Uh, there has been a real divergence uh, over the past generation between highly skilled workers uh, and everybody else. Uh, one way to make that breakdown is between people with a college degree and everybody else. And that divergence hasn't just been in income, but it's been in all kinds of lifestyle indicators too. Everything from participation in the workforce to stability of marriages to how much people smoke. Uh, and this book seeks to uh, grapple with uh, figuring out how this divergence came about and what, if anything, can be done about it. The demand for highly skilled workers keeps going up as we enter this information age and uh, an ever more complicated, uh, complex um, economy. Uh, but the supply uh, of highly skilled workers has slowed down. Uh, so uh, our high school graduation rate today is lower than it was in 1970. Uh, our college graduation rate uh, has been growing, but much slower over the past 30 years than it did in the 30 years before that. And it's grown not at all for men. All the growth is uh, for women. Uh, and that's a mystery. Uh, if, the, if the premium for getting a college degree has gone way up, which it has, uh, back in 1980, the average college grad made about 30% more than the average high school grad. Now it's 70% more. So the market is telling people, go get a college degree, get skills, and yet people aren't responding. The answer to that question, what's going on? Why are some people doing so well and everybody else not kind of falling behind? Uh, the, the stereotypical answer on the right is it's all genes. There's only so many smart people. Uh, they rise to the top. Everybody else is more or less doomed. The stereotypical answer on the left is the system is to blame. Uh, there's nothing wrong with poor people that fatter paychecks wouldn't cure, and we've had a decline of unions and too much outsourcing, and the rich don't pay enough taxes. We need to change the system. Uh, the answer that I've come up with really satisfies neither uh, uh, left nor right stereotypes, that the real answer is culture, that to, to, to be flush with human capital, to have these uh, skills that the market now rewards, you really need to start working on it from birth. If you were born to uh, high income, highly educated parents, then from word go, uh, you're raised in an environment where you're being intellectually stimulated, where you're being uh, run through one organized activity after another, where you're scheduling your time and you're dealing with all kinds of different people and you're dealing with bureaucratic institutions. You're also being taught from the get-go uh, to think ahead, to defer gratification, to, uh, to plan for the long term. You're surrounded by peers who are all being raised that way. So everything is pushing you in the direction of developing human capital. If you're raised in the working class or in the underclass, it's very different. A much less intellectually stimulating home life, uh, much narrower social circles, uh, and much shorter time horizons. Uh, and so this cultural gap, I think, is really uh, at the root of the problem. We have this growing demand for uh, highly skilled workers, which means a growing supply or a potential supply of interesting, challenging, uh, remunerative jobs, and we don't have the people to fill them. Uh, and so uh, there's more room at the top the, uh, than is currently being occupied. Uh, and that's a shame that there's these opportunities going begging. The darker possibility is that over time, if a lot of people feel like they're being left behind and only a, a, a fraction, say the third or so of people who are uh, uh, college educated are doing well and everybody else is doing poorly, then there's going to be growing pressure to change the rules of the system. Uh, and uh, and that ch those changes could take the form uh, of policies that inhibit entrepreneurship, inhibit economic growth, which is what creates the additional complexity, which is what creates the demand for additional skills, which is what creates the potential for further social progress. So it's bad enough to have potential wasted. It's even worse to have potential eradicated. And that's the risk we run if we don't uh, figure out ways to spread opportunities more widely. The case is clear uh, that we need uh, not just to throw more money at the problem, but to change the incentives and change the structures of how schooling is delivered in American life, and in particular, to introduce more entrepreneurship, more competition. The good news is that high-quality schools are capable uh, of, of compensating for these cultural differences. They are capable of closing the achievement gap. Good charter schools, there are some exhaustive studies done of them, they can close that gap or close it significantly. Uh, the huge question is how do we get those little isolated pockets of success scaled up uh, and spread uh, countrywide. And 
I think the only way to do that is to have a more competitive environment where educational entrepreneurs with a better idea are able to come into the uh, marketplace and able to offer a better product uh, and successes are copied and failures uh, are abandoned.